Did you know, as of 2019, there are about 1,181,019 existing video games? Better get playing. You're listening to the Xbox Hub podcast, the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. For the latest Xbox news, reviews, videos, and opinions, make sure you visit the xboxhub.com. But for now, settle down, get comfy, and open your ears for some podcast delights. Hello, and welcome to the Xbox Hub official podcast, episode number 42. My name is Gareth Bryan. I'm going to be your host, and on my virtual left is Mr. James Burks. How are you doing, James? Good evening. Good evening. I'm, it, I'm okay. We're I'm okay. Tired, okay. Now, just behind the curtains, we're doing this uh, podcast straight after the PlayStation State of Play, and so it's, it's, a, it's a later time for us. We're all getting old. I'm definitely old. 10 o'clock, and, but who's not old? On my virtual right is Mr. Richard Dobson. How are you doing, Richard? don't know. I feel, I feel a bit old. As you think how I feel. It's way past my bedtime. We're packing you up. Yeah, I should be drinking Ovaltine, got slippers on. Oh, I don't. Yeah. I'm more tired. Taking vitamins. That's what I need to be doing at this time. Not, not doing a podcast <laughs> about a PlayStation state of play, which is what we're talking about tonight, because we've just seen it. And um, let's be honest from the start. When this week we heard about the state of play, it, it got re- Monday, did we hear about it? Is that right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. PlayStation were very quick off the bat to say, you know, we're not going to be showing any ple- you know, any consoles, any kind of um, release dates of when the console is. We're not going to be showing anything uh, from the PS5 games. It's all about PS4 and VR. That's fair to say, isn't it? That's what they were kind of saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think this created quite a backlash, didn't it, from the PlayStation community and everyone, really. Um, was a bit disappointed and think, what's the point of this? Uh, how did you feel before you went into it? Did you think this is going to be terrible? I, I thought I'd have to have a drink to get through it. <laughs> I had the whiskey ready, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it looks to be deceiving. Yeah. It sounded like a bad show, but it wasn't... It was quite good. It was good, wasn't it? It was good. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty good. I was I was kind of surprised. Forty minutes, Impressed. quite slick, you know. Hmm. You know, rec- pre-recorded. What about you, Richard? Were you were you worried before you came into this? I was. I was quite looking forward to some VR news because I think after the the PlayStation Five one that that I was also on the podcast for my my big criticism for that was there was no VR news at all, mm. and it kind of put. For me, it sort of put the the PlayStation VR in a bit of limbo. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised with what they did announce for VR, which we'll get on to. Yeah, we will do. But they, we still don't know if there's going to be a new VR headset and equipment that goes with the no. PS5, do we? So, uh... No, but I think one of the announcements sounded almost made it sound like they were going to keep with the existing headset mm. for now. Okay, yeah. Well, should we go straight into it, do you think? Um, because we've got quite a, quite a bit to get through in this 40-minute presentation. Uh, I think what we do is, we, as we do normally, is we just go through each of the announcements in order. And then we'll just do a little extra chat at the end about something also that got announced PlayStation-wise this week. Um, so the first, the first game that they talked about was, was Crash Bandicoot 4, which we already knew that was coming in um, October on PlayStation and Xbox um, One. Um, and they showed quite a little bit of a chunk about this and about the details about levels and uh, characters and skins and uh, a sort of new mirror mode. What was your impressions there? James, what was your impression? Are you excited about this? I, I actually am. Oh! <laughs> I thought they gave quite a lot of gameplay which helped mm. convince me. With the inverted um, reality mode, that looks quite cool. So, to, to talk through that, what what was your um, take on that? How I see it is that it will just change the normal levels in the way it looks and maybe plays, so you get more replayability. So, so the the example they showed, yeah, 
Ah, uh, yeah. Which is quite cool. Um, it looks rather groovy as well. <laughs> it does. Um, but yeah, no, I was impressed with the new features as well, like the rail grinding, um, the slow down your time. You can shift reality. Yeah. Um, it's quite a lot of new stuff. It is a bit it's it's, old. But it still looks like an, a Crash Bandicoot game, doesn't it? Definitely. Yeah. It kept the, um, the heart of the game. Yeah. And, Richard, what, what was your impressions? What do you think? Are you, are you excited yeah, about I, I was saying uh, the, the amount of new stuff that they did introduce was, was, was very exciting, but then also some of the playable characters that you get to play as. So they, they, they'd already mentioned Coco and uh, Cortex were playable characters, but but then when they mentioned Dingo Dial, oh, yeah. I got very excited. Um, and Dingo, he's, one of, he's, he's, a, he's a guy with a rocket launcher, isn't he? Yeah, he had sort of like a rocket launcher, flamethrower, hybrid sort of thing. <laughs> and, um, and his arc was he had a diner, he, he, he left behind villainy, and he bought a diner and it got blew up and that's where you were. Yeah, start. and he got sucked into the, the time vortex thing. <laughs> but yeah, he's a personal favourite. Oh. So uh, I'm looking forward to being able to, to play as him and not just in a... Uh, a crash team racing environment and going back to that kind of mirror mode stuff which is kind of like which is a new way of doing it so you'd you replay a level but they would do something like they showed examples of you might replay a level and you might be adding the color to the level so you can yeah. see where you're going which is interesting or there's one that went back to a sort of 1930s cuphead type um animation where it your movement was quite jerky as well, so you had to kind of work with that. So that was, that was really interesting, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, some cool effects. Yeah. Really cool camera effects. Yeah. As I remember the... the Sorry, James. The I was the When it first got announced, there was rumours going around that it was going to have over 100 levels, like the, the NCN trilogy did. And I think this is how that rumour sort of come about now because there'll be so many levels but they'll all be replayable right yeah in all these different ways so I think that's that's maybe where that rumour came from now looking back at it yeah um, it's really I wasn't I, I you know I didn't even think about this I, I forgot that this game was coming out you know when I was thinking yeah. of the autumn lineup, I just just didn't think about it but actually it's quite it's good it looks good fun doesn't it yeah, yeah it does yeah, it's um, one to look forward to. So that's um, that was good. It was a good way to open the show. It well. was a good way, wasn't it? Yeah, very good. Mm. Um, and then we had a little bit of a, a glimpse again of Hitman 3. Is it Hitman 3? I can't mm-hmm. convinced when I wrote this down. Yeah. Um, which we know is going to look gorgeous. So it's coming out in January. So that was the first one. We had a little bit of him in Dubai kind of walking through this kind of lounge. And then it kind of, which is a big announcement, that it's in VR. And then we had it from that kind of first-person perspective. Um, and him going up to someone and taking them out with a, what they call Cheese wire. Is that the right word? Garot. We'll go with it. Garot cheese <laughs> wire. Yeah. Um, VR. Hitman. That's the first. Yeah. Are you excited, Richard? You are a VR man. Me and, me and James don't know anything about VR, except it made me sick once. So you got, you got... <laughs> I've, I've been there as well. But yeah, being able to play the Hitman, because they said at the end of that trailer that the entire World of Assassination trilogy would be playable in VR. So that's mm. one and two as well. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, I think, that, I think that'll be brilliant in VR. It'll be a really unique experience. I'm not sure how excited I should be getting about playing as a hitman in VR. But (laughs) But I think it is. That's a massive kind of intent, that, isn't it? Because, yeah, exactly what you said. It's playing playing the trilogy, isn't it, of these? It's it's just quite amazing. Yeah, I I, I mean, that does... The the one game that would entice me into VR, that's the one I think, that's just really... Mm. That's quite exciting. And this is what I was on about as well, say, because Hitman 3 is going to be across... PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 and Xbox One Series X. So I'm thinking that this this current VR headset will be playable mm. across both both consoles for the time being. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's because I suppose how does it work with movement in VR, Richard? So how do you do? It? So if you're just walking, how's it? How do you do that with the controllers? It depends. Yeah, you can use the controllers. Um, so if I was playing Skyrim in VR, for example, the, I would always use the controller that way. But some games require the the ones, uh, and in those cases, they don't have like analog sticks. You sort of walk from point to point. But I'm mm-hmm. guessing with the the stuff that they showed in Hitman, you would be using the controller to to move that way. And then obviously, you use you can use your head to view things. And anywhere you that you move your head will obviously tr- work through the the PlayStation camera, triggering the movement that way. What I kind of love about it, the idea about it, is it just makes it a lot harder because when you're playing Hitman normally, you've got your the car, guy, and you say you're in a room and you're hiding. You can see the whole room, can't you, when you're hiding, mm-hmm. and you can see the other characters walking about, and then you plan what you you can do. If you're in VR, you're your your vision and what you can see is a lot li- more limited, isn't it? Which is well, quite exciting. You can only see the back of the wardrobe if you were hiding in one of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It makes it a lot harder, but, but it makes it really, in- I think, much more tense. Really interesting. I, yeah. yeah. Maybe James, we have to get VR. What do you think? Yeah, you know, like, I play on console. It good. does look cool. It does look good. Yeah. I'm glad about these things. A lot of content. With three games. Yeah. So much content. Yeah. There um, yeah. Next one, because we have to move through, is um, it had this nice oh. little kind of trailer that mm. um, announced the kind of Braid Anniversary Edition, which is coming in 2021. And for people who haven't played Braid, it was a game that came out on the 360, I think, wasn't it? First of all, and the PlayStation. It certainly 3, did. Maybe. I thought it was Back a 360 in. only, yeah. But yeah, it was a long time now. Yeah, two thousand, must be ten years. Oh. And it was this kind of like little two D um, um, platform by the guy who did The Witness. That was his second game, and it was a it was a really a game about kind of which you think is a normal play about time travel and everything, but it's also a game about kind of nuclear physics and uh, the atomic bomb. It was a really complex platformer but it got everyone really excited did you two play it yeah i think i played it twice oh you play it on the 360 and i think i reviewed it on the xbox one and did you um yeah maybe we really got an update um it's a great puzzle game though yeah so much depth to it and i, I was quite excited when i saw the trailer until i re- realized it was great <laughs> Because you could just updated the current one for free. Yeah. So there you go, guys. Have a treat. Yeah. You know. But... Have you played it, Richard? No, I've not. I know the uh, the big twist in it though. Yeah. Which always, which did always interest me a little bit about, it, but yeah, I just never got around to it. I mean, it always it makes me laugh. It has us. We showed a little bit of a sliding thing of like the version from two thousand and nine and. And now, I can never see that much of a difference. The only thing I saw was the difference was the sun was a bit... Was a bit okay, so the sunshine was yeah. but there, <laughs> there, was, there was nine pixels more. Was it a sunnier day than yeah. it was in 2008? Yeah, it yeah. was. Um, but part of that game's original charm, it was it didn't look amazing back then. That was the whole point of it. It was like a, a retro game. That was the whole look of it, wasn't it? Hmm. It wasn't competing yeah. with the kind of like games at the time, but yeah. There you go. If you like Braid, play it again. Twenty twenty one. Never played it before, but I think they were worth getting into I, it. And also, I think they were hinting that kind of whole thing about commentaries about how games are made, and so that could be really mm. interesting. Um, the next one, after saying we're not going to do any PS five new games, there was a PS five um, new game release we've never seen before called The Pathless, uh, and that is coming out this year. So this could be a launch game for the PS five. We probably will be if it's coming out this year um and richard what do you how could you describe the pathless it was an open world game where you can control a woman who used a bow and arrow to sort of get 
fluid movement in between areas. Yeah. Um, and, and when I was watching this, knowing I was going to be on this this podcast straight after, I did immediately think this would be a, a great game for Gareth. This seemed right <laughs> up Gareth Street. It does, it does. The, the other two. Yeah. I'm trying to think, what, I was trying to think of a comparison game. The only thing I could think of was almost like Journey a little bit. Um, has a little bit of journey, but it isn't in that kind of animation, that kind of world. It looked like a kind of indie game. Um, yeah. But it looked the kind of it looked really stunning. I think the open world would be kind of beautiful. The animation, the there's a kind of boss fight that we saw. Um, they showed quite a lot of it um, with these kind of creatures that you have to what, sort of. Create. What was that boss? Like a very angry moose. I think it was an angry moose. Yeah, <laughs> a red angry moose. Um, it, I, I think it's one of those games that I, like you said, I, I really like the look of straight away. I thought this was lovely. It's going to be great. Um, what do you think, Joe? I just don't know why she didn't use the eagle to get around faster at all times. <laughs> why with the bow? It's like the Lord of the That's Rings why? at the end of the Lord of the Rings. Why don't the eagles <laughs> fly into the place? Yeah. 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 No, but it, it looks really different. It looks different. Yeah. Um, and when she's chasing that moose and you've got to shoot to get to catch up to it, I thought it was quite cool. Yeah. Listen to that, it wasn't just a normal moose, it was a huge creature on fire kind of moose. It's a very, very angry moose. <laughs> yes. <And laughs> it's it was a fire, moose. fire moose. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that must be a launch or near about yeah. launch game. So, and it, yeah, it's probably an indie kind of, it feels like an indie half price. It does game rather than a full yeah. price game. But great. Intriguing. Though. Yeah, really good. I'm really was excited about that. We had PlayStation mm. 5 game, it looked really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then we had uh, Splunky 2. You two played the first Splunky. I've not played yeah. it. Richard? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's more of it. <laughs> it's coming. But there was a kind of like a nice little feature by the developer. And if you're a Splunky fan, they talk about how they're making it online, multiplayer, lots of different features. It just looks like a complete, um, what's the word? Re, re, not reimagining, uh, kind of like a. It's Splunky too. It's more of the same, but with extra features. We're better. Yes. Bigger and better. So yeah. if, you're, if you're looking for that, it's, it's, um, it's coming out in September the 15th. So it's not far away. Is it coming to the Xbox as well? I think that one is, because oh, the first yeah. one's on there, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a nice. It's, it's worth having a look at them. But I think the online multiplayer might be quite fun for people. It looks like a good game because they always look. Splunk, it always looks very hard, so it'd be quite nice to share it with someone or for someone to carry me. James, <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's pretty good. Yeah, thank you. Right? I'll do it again. Good, thank you. <sighs> um, next game on the list because we've got a lot to get through. <laughs> Gershin Impact. Is that right? Have I Genshin. Said that's it. James, talk us through this. You're the man for this. I, there, wasn't, there wasn't much to say about it, as in, it didn't tell you an awful lot, did it? Um, but I believe it's an open world um, action RPG. Yep. Uh, but I was just drawn in by the anime style characters and the woman with bunny ears. That sold it instantly for me. Couple of years, I mean. Yeah, but the animation um, looked nice, and it, but it yeah. did, did look like a game I've seen. A, a... I think it's a multiplayer uh, game as well. Okay, I think you can play it together and go and kill um, creatures and such. Um, do um, you, Richard, do you like the look of this? Yeah, um, I thought that the world. Some of the, the shots of the world that you got to explore looked really impressive. Mm. And uh, a world that I'd like to spend a bit of time in. But, yeah, if if, if it's a, a multiplayer, then uh, dibs on the girl with the bunny ears. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> you, t- you two have got some taste. I, I've written down, I, I thought I saw one of the characters shout out, time for Hitler, when they're in battle. And I'm sure that yeah. can't be right. I, I mean, 
<laughs> it could be. You know, not part of the narrative. Maybe there's something in Hitler. That's what I thought for a moment, but maybe I got that wrong. Time for something else. <laughs> Time for Hitler. Yeah, I'm, right. is... I'm in the gate now. I'll give it a miss. <laughs> I'm sure that's not right. Um, no. The next game we've got on the list is, I've written down Animation Brilliant, and it's I think it's a game called Aeon Must Die. Yeah. And it's coming, I'm so out, confused. coming out in 2021. Yes. How would you describe I'd... this anime? It was like a fighting game, like a, almost like a street fighting game, wasn't it? Yeah, with with extra neon and yeah. a synth with soundtrack. That soundtrack, what was that track they used? It was like a classical track synth stuff, and I've heard it yeah. before, and it's going to drive me mad. I don't know. But yeah, it's really worth looking at. The animation style is almost like an old 80s kind of transformer feel to it. it has a little been... bit Tron like. Yeah. Tron. Yeah. Absolutely Tron. Yeah. It was almost like you were just fighting bosses. Yeah. In a in a single mm. stage at, at every point. I was a bit a bit confused, you know. But I was kind of intrigued by it. That's what was, I think with mm. all a lot of these games in this whole conference, I was intrigued by all of them, even though I knew I was gonna be really bad at a lot of them and I wouldn't be able to get past the first five minutes. But yeah. I think they had more intrigue than maybe some of the other conferences we've seen so far. Definitely. I think it lost its way a little bit from this point in explaining about the game. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could have done with a little bit of commentary. Yeah, on some of them. I that think... really helped with the other games we'd seen prior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like, next game. I'm, I'm interested in this. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to notes on the next game. I've got Anne Mutant 2020. It's Sorry, I'm just going to... I was going to say before, the AM must die is coming out in 2021. Before I say that, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry, James, what is it? I know Mutation M. Oh, yeah. And what, what do we see here? I think it's Open World. That's um, it, yes. It's a, I think it, it looked 2.5D. So it'd be a side scroll in that action adventure. Um, I did. I really like the look of it. It's got, like you said, it's, mm-hmm. this kind of woman's going through this kind of like almost like cyberpunk world. This kind of almost Blade Runner world, traveling through this kind of brilliant animation of kind of like people in shadows. But then we sort of see her at the end of the trailer. She's sort of broken and and limp. And then there's this giant Bible. Is that right? <laughs> did I imagine <laughs> this? Was I dreaming this? And she's sort of standing. I don't remember a giant Bible. It was. A, it was a sort of. With a, a big book with a cross on it, she's looking at it, and then it stopped. Okay. Rich, Richard, it. you remember this, don't you? Please, was it not one of me having the detox <laughs> breakdown? No, I, I don't remember this at all either. <laughs> <laughs> a giant Bible, right? People, if there's a giant Bible, please write in because I'm going to go mad. <laughs> if you have a giant Bible, send it to him. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go back straight away after this and see this. But yeah, it looked. Strange and interesting again. I was kind of we don't know much about it though, do we? No, but there's an intrigue there again. There's something that draws you into yeah. work to find out more. Yeah, um, and it it looked pretty cool, aren't mm, it? Definitely. Else, though. Um, moving on. Bug Snatch. <sighs> it's back. Um, coming out on the PS5, 2020 must be a launchy title around that about the time. Um, Nate, I'm, I've written down here. It looks fun, and it's it it looked a bit more complicated this time than we saw before. We saw a bit of the kind of gameplay, which looked like it was you're trapping bugs or you're doing these kind of you're building these contraptions to trap bugs, and it was we it was in um, first person, which I didn't realise and. I was a bit more interested in it. I mean, I'm not going to play it for long. <laughs> um, Richard, what do you think? Are you, are you into Bug Snatch? just managed to get the, the theme tune out of my head. <laughs> so seeing a new trailer for it with the theme tune playing again has got it stuck in there till at least Christmas now. <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm i intrigued. Again, this is another one that's got me intrigued. And seeing that little bit of gameplay yeah. adds a bit of depth to it as well. And I, and I do want to know a bit more about it as well. What did we see in the gameplay? I, that's what I could, it, was, it was kind of 
this character is setting traps for some of these bugs. Bit of there seems to be there. some sort of monster or well, bug catching element to it, mm. but then catching those helped rebuild this town. And as the town built up, a lot of the residents were changing appearance. So I'm not sure how it all fits together. Yeah. It's still that family playing. game, isn't it? It's a very family game. I'm trying to think what it might be like in comparison. But, you know, it's a good little launch thing for the PS5, you know. Um, James, are you impressed by it still? <laughs> I, I tuned out when it came on. I had enough of it in the first one, really. It was nice to see a bit, bit of colour. It was something more colourful. So. <laughs> what I'm confused about is, right, all the little bugs, there's little bugs, and they, they've got eyes, right? Yeah. And they're running around. And then you've got almost these bigger creatures that look like bigger bugs, things, and they're eating the smaller bugs. That's nature. <laughs> that is nature. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite horrific for a, for a kid's game. Yeah. I mean, that original trailer, there was a little strawberry with eyes running around. Yeah, it's and then, cute, isn't it? Yeah, and then that guy ate it and just sort of yeah. like smiled and looked at the camera. It was very but weird. At the end of the original trailer as well, there was that. It was sort of like a, a forest setting and all these bugs sort of fused together for this one bigger thing that then just charged at the camera. So I'm, yeah. I'm not sure there might be something a little bit more sinister to it than... Mm -hmm. And first appears anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Something more sinister. It gets very dark in Bug Snap. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a very dark turn. <laughs> it's going to be that Bible again. That huge Bible is going to appear. <laughs> and they're all looking Clearly at it. <laughs> glossing over the cannibalism aspect. Of things, <laughs> yeah, they <so>. are. <laughs> yeah. Um, good. Bug Snap's PS5. We know it's coming 2020, so that's going to be a release. Um, ah, the next one, Richard. Another VR one for you. Um, Vader. Said that wrong. How do... Radar. Have you ever seen the films? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the one in um, the one in the helmet from Star Wars, Lord Vader. Oh, oh Darth Vader. Dave Vader. He's <laughs> he's immortal, and that's the name of the game. Vader, immortal, and that's in <laughs> VR, and that's coming August 2020. Um, mm. I, this didn't excite me at all. But Richard, t tell us why it excited you. Uh, did it? Um, other than <laughs> other than the fact it's Star Wars and you get to wield a lightsaber in VR, I, it just looked like a lot of it was lightsaber training. Mm. I'm not sure how much depth that game's going to have, but the, the the trailer, I think, I think was probably the most boring one of the night. To be honest, it yeah, just yeah. didn't do that much no, for no. me. James, what do you think? I mean, has there been a, v a VR game using Star Wars yet? I know there's been a, a space one, I think, in the, I, in the ship. I couldn't tell you, but it looked like the kind of game that would be good for a newcomer to VR. Something yeah. that's well-known, like Darth Vader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And something that's fairly straightforward would be quite cool to someone that hasn't <laughs> Be quite innovative to anyone that hasn't played a VR game. I yeah. play it. Okay. I've not played any VR games before, so it's kind of, in it's kind of the game that I would look for. Okay. It's a simple entry game. Did Connect have a a VR game? <laughs> yeah. It, it definitely had a Star Wars game. It did, and it had. Uh, was it? C3PO themed connect and an R2D2 Xbox 360. And you could play you could play with the lightsaber, can you, in, in your, on your connect as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know that, that um squadrons games coming out in VR. That's right, yes, of course. The, uh, the flight <laughs> space dog fire one. Oh, yeah. yeah, in October. Yeah. yeah. Which I've pre ordered on, on PlayStation to play it in VR. I'm more excited about that one than this Vader game. <laughs> um, so you're not excited about it, but August 2020, so that's coming out now. Soon. Yes, very soon. Do we know about this? Did you know about this was coming out, or anyone? You, I'm they, they had mentioned it before. Right. But, I'm talking uh, like to you, Richard, that you are the king of VR. You are. <laughs> you are the expert. I don't know whether it had been mentioned on VR, but it, it definitely 
was due on on Steam and their VR headsets. I'm not sure about PlayStation VR. That worries me. If they just suddenly go, it's coming out in two weeks. Always worries me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, good. Um, and then we had the next one, which was um, Control, um, a new expansion for Control called Or on the 27th of August. Um, have you both played Control? Yeah. Oh, my no. God. Oh, me. You've got to play Control. Go and play Control. Um, if, you haven't play control. Play, if you haven't played Control, you've got to play Control. Um, Thanks. I don't think it's on the Game Pass. It's this amazing kind of game by Remedy. I'm not going to talk about Control now because it's been out for a year. You can find it yourself. Um, but this is the first expansion pack came out in March, April time, so it's the second one. More of the same. It's great. It's a brilliant, brilliant world, brilliant characters. So I don't understand it. Has PlayStation got an exclusive on this or is it... That's what I didn't understand. I'm sure it's coming to Xbox. The DLC is supposed to be linking it to Alan Wake, though, which is a Xbox exclusive oh, okay we don't know do we they didn't explain anything did I, they? yeah my imagining things i don't think mm. it's gonna be exclusive no it's coming out is that silly exclusive these days okay no one likes exclusives no one likes exclusives <laughs> which we'll talk about <laughs> at the end <laughs> um my next notes are what is this and i think <laughs> It was the most confusing trailer in the world. I think it was Auto Chess. That's what I'm talking about. Is that what the name of the game was? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had no idea what was going on until the title came up. You two are going to enlighten me now. I think Auto Chess was sort of like a hybrid between um, MOBAs, like multiplayer online battle arenas, Mm -hmm. and chess. And the it was originally a mod, I think, for Dota 2, okay. which is one of the yeah. first MOBAs. Um, but then it's branched off into its own subgenre as well as well as its own game. There was a big thing about it, I think, towards the start of this year. But, yeah, I didn't know it was a, a fully-fledged title coming to the PlayStation. I didn't know whether that was a new announcement or not. Right. James, what do you think? <laughs> um, I've read to know more about it before. I condemn it. It's, I wasn't really interested. It's probably the worst trailer in the world. <laughs> it I wasn't guess. great. It wasn't <laughs> great because you, you, basically you saw you saw just a load of chaos on the screen of things fighting each other, didn't you? With no explanation. And it, and it wasn't like an impressive fight sequence. It was like you'd see it as a... Yeah. <laughs> and then it just went... Auto chess, and you're thinking, yeah, you've got to sell I thought it was one of those random YouTube ads in the middle of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> it's free, it's free to play a mobile game. Just, yeah. free, just looking for the skip ads. Skip yeah. ads. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah, we. I don't know when it's coming out. I. October 31st. Oh, so, oh good. Thank you, James. I saw that. Good. That was interesting, but. Next yeah. up is, I think, my favourite looking game so far. Mm. And it's a game called The Pedestrian. And I've just put brilliant here. And it's a game that's almost like a puzzle platformer hmm. where it's all set in signs, like um like a, what can I think? It's like a toilet. If you had a toilet sign, you had the stick figure of the man and the woman. And you play one of them and you have to kind of move, animate that to get them across to the next area. We don't know, do we? We don't know how it works, but it just looked. That's the kind of, and then you're going from like a toilet to outside to like um, the road digging signs, you know, like men at work uh, signs, all the way across to health and safety signs. But it's in those worlds, isn't it, that you're transferring your character across? Mm-hmm. It's very clever. It looked really clever and really mm-hmm. unique. I really like the look of it. Um, you too excited by this as me? Yeah, I mean, the fact that I like a good puzzle game hmm. and to do something different in the puzzle world nowadays is tricky because a lot of it's been done, but I've never seen anything like this one. No. It's very different. Um, and with a whole world going on behind it as well. 
at the same time. Yeah. I like that. So um, you, we saw it kind of in the trailer. You know, it was kind of like the man at work, kind of health and safety, sort of like an industrial site. But then you had yeah. the kind of traffic and people walking by in the background quite large. Yeah, yeah it looked great. And you've got to move the notices about, I need to connect them. Yeah. They might not be in the, they might not be in the right order. Or um, you might have to connect a few together and then move them out. Yeah. And then connect a few more. It's really, really, really fun. It looks really good, doesn't it? And that, I think that's, that's PS4, they said, didn't they? Well, it's already out on PC. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. So it might to Xbox. Okay, yeah. I hope it does. Um, and when's that coming out? Is it coming out 2021? Have I made that up? I, I thought it was January. Right. Maybe January. Yeah, I don't January. know why I care. Richard, do you like the look of this? Yeah, it looked very original. Definitely yeah. one to keep an eye out for. Yeah. And then the last three are coming up now, we saw, and they're all PS5 games, because, of course, we're not, we're not going to see any PS5 games or new announcements. <laughs> and, uh, down, didn't yeah, and now we've got three, oh. two new announcements and one one we knew about. And the first one is Hood Outlaws Outlaw and Legends, and what we saw for this was kind of like a tra- a basically an animated trailer, wasn't it, without any gameplay at all? Yeah. Talk me through this. I I I th- I think I th- know what it is, but I want you to to explain to me, uh, James. What do you think? Where do I start? Um, it, I thought I knew what was going on until th- there was two groups fighting inside the church. And I wonder if it was a multiplayer game. Mm. Um, basically, it's a bit assassin in the way that it's completely brutal in the way you're going to murder people. Um, but I... I I didn't really get much more out of it. It's a sort of killing to get treasure. Richard, what do you think it was? I thought it looked a little bit like For Honor, um, especially the the James mentions as well, where these these two teams had sort of arrived at this treasure chest Mm. at the same time, and whether they'd had to... They'd been following different tracks to get to this point, and then they were just going to have a big brawl, and the winner was going to get the treasure chest. I don't know. It was, yeah, it wasn't really. It didn't explain. It. These are my two theories. I think it's a kind of like a team fortress type arena shooter, not a shooter arena kind of melee kind of fighter. In you know, two teams of four. That's my. That's what I thought first of all. And then we had a, we had a, we had a really kind of glimpse of the um, gameplay, didn't we? A moment of it, like five seconds at the end. And then I thought to myself, are they kind of the heroes and legends? Did we see the kind of God of War person there? Did we see a sort of Assassin's Creed character there as well? Mm. Are they kind of game characters or different, you know, animated versions of those game characters? I'm not sure... No. And then he didn't fight. Was there a Bible? Was there a huge Bible? Did you see the huge Bible? Oh, no, in the church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so it, I've just checked it's a four versus four. Oh, there you go. Multiplayer game. I've got that bit right. Yeah. Um, in Dark Ages, Britain. Right. Um, it's all about stealthily killing people, melee and stuff like that. I mean, it didn't yeah. excite me <laughs> at all. But, no. you know, it might be good fun. It might be. I'm sort of a bit... It's a, it's hard with these kind of four versus four stuff because, you know, I've just reviewed Rocket Arena, which is that three versus three arena shoot. And it's good for a bit. I think everyone's... I don't know. There's something about it that, for me, it just... It bores quite quickly. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you've got to be really good at it, haven't you? You've got to really commit to it. Yeah, stick with it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, exactly. It's great if you stick with a team and play for hours and hours. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not us. Not us at all. We're not exclusive. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. The next one. PS5. Um, there's a game called Temtem. Have I got that right? Temtem. 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 Yeah. Tem -tem. yeah. What, what's Temtem? It's a Pokemon. <laughs> with online um, connectivity. So you can go and explore worlds ah. together and fight other creatures. Temtem's been on Steam for about a year on early release, mm -hmm. and it and it was was described as a a Pokemon game that wasn't on Nintendo, basically. Oh, okay, mm. I know it works with the battle system as well. But I don't. I didn't. I think this is the first announcement that it's been on that is coming to consoles anywhere. And it's coming. Uh, I think it's been in the works for a while uh, for console. Oh, yeah, right. Xbox One. They said that in the Kickstarter a few years ago. It's been a long time in the making. So it's a kind of Pokemon type game, but it's, it's massively online. People, yeah, we, 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 together. yeah, we saw loads of, loads of people there, didn't we? And capture different creatures. Okay. You got to catch them all. <laughs> got to catch them all. Um, are you too excited about this? Because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. You? James is good. Yeah. Oh, good. Down. I'm not sure. And that's coming in 2021 to the PlayStation 5. Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, yeah. Richard's going to put that down as his uh, number one Christmas present. That is on the list already. The pre <laughs> order. I didn't get in that. <laughs> what do you get for Christmas Day? I've got a pre order uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> for, temp, pre -order <laughs> for Tem Tem <laughs> in spring 2021. It was it was just a five pound deposit as well. I still got to go and put <laughs> the rest of it together. <laughs> oh dear! Um, and then the final game we had, which was we know about, which is Godfall. So we had a kind of a, a more in depth, kind of like maybe eight minute look at gameplay, um, some weapons, um, enemies, a kind of boss fight. So quite a bit. So if you're going to look at the state of play, we've seen it. Have a look back, and you'll see you'll get. A, pretty good idea what this game's about really um i'm gonna say this i'm i've never been excited about this game i don't think i am excited about this. i don't think this game's for me um i agree yeah why is that why is that you two why why are you not enthused about it are we being unfair on it it just looks to me like a very repetitive and shallow gameplay loop that is almost indicative of a a new launch title for a new console. Okay. But he's he's the guy that he was describing it as as a looter slasher. And that that I can buy into any any looter shooter or this new term loot slasher I can I can buy into. But for me he didn't what I need to see if I'm going to invest in my time in one of those games is the menu and the UI. Because you spend so much time in those menus that it needs to be on point, basically. Okay, right. Where I all, all we saw was slashing, slashing and more slashing. Yeah. James, you feel the same? Exactly what Richard said. Yeah. I... I, I have no interest in any of the mechanics that I saw in the demonstration because you've seen them all done better in different games with more exciting um, fluff around it, if you know what I mean. Mm. Something more interesting because it just looks so bland to me. Exactly. I think at the moment it just looks so generic, doesn't it? Very yeah. generic. Yeah, it looks like we've seen... And it doesn't look like anything like a new generation of consoles, does it? It doesn't feel like it, it doesn't. It's not because that's their launch title, isn't it? It's one of their launches, and it, every, you know, it looks good. It looks good. It looks pretty, but it doesn't look like it's breaking any boundary sets, is it? No, no. And it reminds me of Darksiders. Um. A little bit, for some reason. 
those kind of gains. And it, it sort of reminds me of a sort of like 70%, three and a half stars game. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. I don't, know, I don't know why. And that's been a bit cruel because we don't know. But like you said, it just doesn't, there's nothing there. It does feel, you know, it was when they said as well, it's all about, it's much more about the offense than the defense. Yeah. So if you're looking at, you know, your Dark Souls um, people, you know, who are big fans of that kind of like that fight mechanic, Mm-hmm. For them, it's that focuses on the defense, isn't it? As well, you know, it's about that strategy game. It felt like they were saying this is all about kind of like moving and attack, 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 and there doesn't seem to be much else to it, like you mm. both said. Well, you might be wrong. Yeah. We'll find out when it comes out. Yeah, we'll check the Metacritic score. And see if we're right. <laughs> yes, if we're right, <laughs> if we see exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, Godfall, and that was it. That was our state of play. Nice little. I enjoyed it though. I did enjoy it. Forty minutes, well put together. Yeah, I thought it was much better than the other ones. Um, so big question to you, as I always ask this at this point. So the the first thing is, do we think this is is going into madness now? So we don't know when these consoles are coming out. We don't know a price, and we don't know what the launch titles are, do we? Mm. It's living a bit late. Why? In the day. Why are they playing this game? Do you think? What's your thoughts? Why? They're waiting they... to see who shows the hand first. That's what you do. Yeah, right? that's what I think. Yeah. And then the other one will undercut it. Whatever the price, the second company to reveal will undercut the first. Even by just a fiver. Just to prove a point. Okay. So you think that's the only Silly. reason at the moment that it's yeah, about so. who's going to show the hand first? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's getting quite late now, isn't it? Because <laughs> it's where, where are we now? August? August the 6th or 7th? Yeah, 6th. Because there was a leak this week, wasn't it, on a French website for PlayStation and it had a price, which is something like 450. 400 for the, the digital and then it got pulled straight away mm. which makes you think is that are we getting are we getting very close to it now i think we must be getting close to it i think it's got to be on a practical sense isn't it yeah at, at first i thought it was going to be down to covid and, and the way that the world is at the moment mm. but was it this week or last week playstation had announced that they were ordering more PS5 units. So I, I, I that sort of said that the coronavirus isn't going to affect the, the release of these consoles. So I do think they are just waiting for... One, one of the two is waiting for the other one to make a move. Okay, yeah. Um, does this state of play um, make you want to buy the PS5? <laughs> Richard? On the launch? No. It makes me more excited for what's still to come on current consoles, consoles though. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. I think it shows that there's still life in, in the old dog that give PS4 a bit longer. Mm-hmm. Plenty to play. Yes. I think it's going to be next year, isn't it, that we're going to see all the all the games start to come out a bit more. I think even from some of the kind of really re- trailers and kind of like games that are being hinted at for the next couple of years, it does really feel like these consoles, and I think this is said, it's going to be a, a, you know, we saw some really nice indie games today, but that kind of open world, large AAA games mm. are going to be the big, um, what these consoles can do, I think. Or maybe like Temtem, which is more that kind of like huge multiplayer online. You know, are we going to get... I know we have got some of those with Black Desert and stuff, but are we going to get something like a World of Warcraft on there? Yeah, so it takes a bit more power. Yeah. It's going to be bug snacks. <laughs> that sold it for me. That's what I'm getting straight away. Um, 
I'm going to just briefly go. I'm going to keep you a bit longer, um, you two, mm-hmm. only for five minutes longer. Um, the the other thing that will happen this week, PlayStation wise, is the Avengers um, game, which is coming out September the fourth. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew some of the Avengers uh, DLC characters like Hawkeye. We talked about it last week. It's getting released, um, but the big one this week was that Spider Man uh, is getting released as a DLC character. Um, but it's going to be PlayStation only exclusive. Um, and <laughs> this this caused the internet to burn, and the Xbox fans people were saying, "I'm not going to buy this game um, because I can't get I can't be one of my favorite Marvel characters." Um, I mean, this has been done before, hasn't it? With you know, loads of games, you can only if you're on one console or the other, you can you know, have extra little features that each one has. Destiny, uh, FIFA, you know, goes Call on. Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah. Um, so it's not nothing new, but I think because it's Spider Man, it yeah. it makes it a bit. Of, what's your What's your thoughts, you two, uh, Richard? What's your thoughts on this? Without trying to stir the pot. <laughs> any more than already has been done I, I think some people do have a valid argument if you look at Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 mm-hmm. which is exclusive to the Switch I'm pretty sure Spider-Man's on that so yes. the whole Sony thing owning the rights to Spider-Man they don't, seems they to don't f- own the rights in the games they don't own the rights well that's it yeah so it it doesn't fit um their it doesn't fit what, what people are trying to say about it. Um Spider Man's out there and is available. <laughs> are you doing his Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> Single and ready to mingle. <laughs> With a webby tingle. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Spider senses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it happens. Con- console exclusivity has happened many times before. It's going to continue to happen. So people moaning about it isn't going to change it at the same time. Do do the Xboxes have a point, James? Do they get. I think it's irritating hmm. more than anything else. To people that love Marvel, because he's a he's a massive character. It's not like they've gone, oh, we'll take, I don't know, well, Hawkeye, for example. If they had Hawkeye, you'd go, oh well, they've got an exclusive character, but I can live without Hawkeye. Yeah. But it's Spider-Man. It's on a multi-platform game. Is a bit of a kick in the teeth. Mm. Um, again, if it was a first session exclusive game, then you can't argue with it. It's friendly, isn't it? Because they can do what they want. But it's just a shame that people on other platforms want it to enjoy web slinging. First of all, I thought it was because it was linked to the. As well, I thought, oh, this is interesting. They're going to have the Spider Man um, from the, the PS4 Spider Man. Yeah. You know, yeah. That and that's going to be. You know that's that character and that voice actor and all that's going to be in the Avengers. I thought oh, that's that interesting. Would make sense. Yeah, but they've said yeah. no. It's not. It's a different. It's different world. dynamics. Very own character. Yeah. Or very own take on the character. All right. Um. But yeah, it, they've obviously got a good relationship with Marvel and Disney, mm. so they've they've wrangled that deal. Um, with Crystal Dynamics and that. Because the, the beta came out. Um. This, yeah, yeah, for the Avengers, and it 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 got a little. It didn't get a huge response, did it? It got kind of mid. People said, I think what people could play with, they could play kind of you play three missions, and then it opened the multiplayer up, and they they liked it, but they were worried. I think people liked the sort of story and the kind of atmosphere, but they were worried about the loot and everything else. The emphasis on the loot wasn't that strong, or yeah, the people said that the online side felt more like a chore. 
compared to the single player experience. Okay. Um, I think that's given the draw of it is the story, like you say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you need to work on that because for longevity, if you want people to stick with the game until Spider Man arrives, that's a good three, four months maybe. Yeah. You've got to get a multiplayer strong. And it's um, coming out five or six weeks. Well, into less than that. Yeah. Isn't it? Is it? When's it? September the 4th? Yeah. It's a month yeah. away. Yeah, that's oh, a month. Wow. And people are already quite angry. Critical of the <laughs> core experience. Yeah. Um, but I didn't get so much from it, so I'll probably okay. try the beta to get a better insight. You're playing it. We're, three of us are playing it. <sighs> so carry <laughs> you. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Uh, you Richard to help. I'm going to be Batman. That's why I'm playing. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> he's, he's the Xbox exclusive character. <laughs> he's just on his own. <laughs> In Alfred. Yeah. <laughs> right, good. Lovely. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It's late hour. It's late for us now. Um, yeah. on, the, on the Thursday night. But um, that's great. We enjoyed that, though. I enjoyed it. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Absolutely. Really mm. good. Um, Richard, where can we find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Dobbo1912. Great, James, where can find you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram at OKUKO. Brilliant. And you can find me at GB Briley on Twitter and on Twitch. So, um, thank you very much. Um, if you've got any thoughts of things that you liked or any thoughts about the Avengers, just don't get angry or dubious um but let us know and please subscribe please go on to uh, especially on the apple like leave a comment leave a comment something nice for the stars um and we will see you very soon so goodbye james thank you goodbye thank you goodbye richard <laughs> goodbye thank you good night <laughs> god bless <laughs> and look out for those bibles those giant bibles and uh, we'll see you we'll see you next week bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. bye. You've been listening to the official podcast of the xboxhub.com. You'll be able to find all the notes of this show at www.thexboxhub.com slash podcast. You can also check out our social feeds on Instagram and Twitter at the Xbox Hub and search for the Xbox Hub on Facebook. 